for uh, in, in ME CFS, uh, a number of uh, specific uh, receptors and other proteins have been discovered using the gene expression method that are involved with chronic fatigue uh, syndrome. One of them uh, that we discovered was, in fact, the key receptor that we think is really important for uh, normal fatigue, and that is the ASIC-3 receptor, the acid-sensing ion channel receptor. So we've seen uh, again and again that in almost all patients, in fact, all patients that, that we've actually looked at so far, that the ASIC-3 receptor is altered in a, in a very uh, negative way in patients who have uh, chronic fatigue. Um, Another gene that we've seen altered in, in many patients, and maybe even more so than the ASIC3, is the P2X4 receptor. The P2X4 receptor actually detects ATP, which is the energy of life. So it makes some, some sense that, in fact, the P2X4 receptor would be involved as well. But it turns out that it's, it's, it, and for normal fatigue, it's altered in a, uh, I mean, it actually has a very different function than you might think. It actually modifies the ASIC3 receptor. So the two of them actually work together. Another gene that we found that, that is really important and actually does tell us much about chronic fatigue syndrome in a lot of the patients is, are the adrenergic receptors. The adrenergic, adrenergic receptors are also, uh, expression are also changed dramatically in a number of the chronic fatigue patients, not all, but in many of them. And finally, the immune genes that we found that were altered, one of the, the two of the major ones were uh, IL-10, IL-10 is normally an anti-inflammatory receptor, which is, normally would be involved in decreasing inflammation. Uh, it is often increased dramatically in patients with chronic fatigue syndrome. The other one is the TLR4 receptor. It's a toll-like receptor. That one's involved normally in detecting pathogens such as bacteria. That one is also altered in the chronic fatigue patients in a way that is generally counterproductive. Uh, uh, counter to the, actually the, the protection that it's supposed to, to give you. The genes that, are, that I've mentioned previously that are involved, that we know are markers of chronic fatigue syndrome, are almost directly involved in the symptoms that the patients have. For example, the, the ASIC3 receptor that I mentioned previously is involved in signaling fatigue. So it isn't too surprising that if it is altered, that in fact the sensation of fatigue that people have and the consequences of the signaling to the brain of fatigue could be altered in a way that could produce uh, considerably more fatigue than you, you should normally feel. Uh, similarly, the adrenergic receptors, uh, we've discovered at least one of the adrenergic receptors could be directly involved in patients who have ME chronic fatigue syndrome, in particular those that have a condition that's called POTS, uh, or postural orthostatic tachycardia uh, syndrome. Uh, the gene that is specifically altered in that is the alpha adrenergic receptor, and we believe that it could, it actually is downregulated dramatically in some of these patients, and for that reason could be directly involved in the symptom of uh, postural orthostatic tachycardia that these patients have. So other genes that, that are altered are the immune genes. And the immune genes, normally patients with chronic fatigue, ME, very often they get, uh, they seem to get nearly every illness that goes around. So that they're constantly sick. They, they get herpes infections uh, much more often than the normal people do. Uh, that could be related quite directly to the increase in IL-10 that we've, that we've seen uh, in a, a number of these patients. So in addition to, to the uh, symptoms and conditions and body, body functions that I mentioned previously, uh, there are some genes that we see that are, are dysregulated and altered in ME chronic fatigue syndrome that are uh, beyond what I already mentioned. One of the receptors that we found to be involved uh, is a thing called TRIP-V1. Uh, the TRIP-V1 receptor is the, the receptor that allows you to detect the essence of hot peppers. It also is the gene that allows you to determine uh, heat, how hot you are. We've seen in a number of the patients that this gene is altered. Now, it could be altered only in 
and may only affect the signaling of fatigue because it is directly involved, it's found in the sensory neurons, so it could be directly involved in just the detection of fatigue. But also, it, what we see in some of these patients is that their ability to regulate their temperature is not normal. They have temperature that swings high and low and they often feel hot or cold. Uh, and what we see is uh, in patients that have that kind of a, a problem with AME-CFS, which is a lot of them, that the trip d one receptor is often very dysregulated. So we often talk about uh, genetics and genomics. So there is a question of what is the genome? Well, the genome is just normally, people think of it as just the all of the DNA that you have that actually is going to uh, be transcribed into proteins. However, the concept of a genome is actually changing now. So that, in fact, we have a thing we call uh, not just the gene expression, but we call it the transcriptome. The transcriptome is all of the genes that are actually transcribed in a particular tissue. So that, that changes a little, a little bit the definition of the genome, because you could think of the transcriptome as being part of the genome, and that transcriptome is, in fact, what we measure when we use gene expression. Genetics and genomics are actually a complex issue. So the common idea is that the uh, DNA all by itself could function all by itself. No, it can't. So the DNA, in order for a protein to be made, must be uh, changed, or the, uh, the DNA must actually make itself another uh, molecule. And the molecule that it makes is the RNA. So the process of the DNA actually making the RNA is called transcription. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube, tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar www.me-cvsvereniging.nl. Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.